Hello again from Digicore Things. While I was considering updating my MECB6809 CPU card design to support both internal and external clock variants of the 6809, I decided I'd also take a look at the reset circuit design. My original 6809 CPU card, which I presented in my last two videos, just faithfully used the same old school reset circuit design of a capacitor, two resistors, and a Smith trigger input chip, as we used in the early days. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but since I'm needing to add another logic chip to the circuit design for implementing the required crotchature clock generator to support the 6809E, I thought I'd take a look at what options were available to optimise the reset circuit and perhaps also save some PCB space. My requirements were pretty simple. It had to still be retro friendly, meaning no service mount devices, purely through hole as a requirement. It had to be cheap, so maybe a dollar component cost at the most. As it turns out, I was pretty happy with what I found. What I found is the microchip TC1232 microprocessor monitor. This chip basically provides a power on reset support for debouncing a manual reset button, and also a watchdog timer facility. Although I don't currently need a watchdog timer, it's a good feature to have available if I was to use the same reset solution for other projects. But what I really liked is that this chip does all of this with no external components required. And it's also available in a retro-friendly 8-pin dual line package. To complete my requirements, I also found I could buy 10 for about $10 from AliExpress. So this also satisfied my $1 component cost limit. So I've created a quick schematic comparison between the existing reset circuit that I'd used on my existing 6809 card and the equivalent based on the TC1232 chip. Let's take a look. As you can see, the existing old school circuit uses a 14 pin Smith trigger input 7414 hex inverter chip, along with a capacitor and a couple of resistors. All of this obviously consumes more PCB space than the single 8 pin dual inline package TC1232 solution. In addition, I really like the data sheet's claim that no external components are required. This would have been a huge attraction back in my early YREP days, when the need to add additional discrete components usually meant adding an IC header to a YREP IC socket to hold and allow YREPing additional discrete components. So it looks like for a TC1232 reset solution, we just need the 8-pin chip and our reset button. Awesome. Now there are a couple of things to note. Firstly, we need to ensure the watchdog timer is constantly reset to avoid undesired system resets. This is controlled by the strobe input pin, which requires a falling edge to reset the timer at least once every 150 milliseconds. Fortunately, the data sheet tells us that the minimum pulse width for the strobe input is 20 nanoseconds. If we were to use a clock signal, this would equate to a maximum frequency of around 25 MHz based on a 50% duty cycle clock with a cycle time of 40 nanoseconds. Therefore, for our retro CPU reset needs, we can simply connect this pin to our system clock signal as long as we don't exceed a 25 MHz clock. No problems there. The second thing to note is that the data sheet's claim of no external components being required only applies to the active high reset output. Fortunately, the chip also has an inverted active low reset output, so we don't need an inverter. However, the active low reset output is an open drain output. Therefore, we do need an external pull-up resistor on the reset signal. Fortunately, for my needs, this doesn't involve any additional external components, as I already have a single inline resistor pack which I used for other required pull-ups, and it has one resistor free. That resistor is of course the 5 volt terminated 10K resistor that we were using with our original reset circuit. 
So it's simply redeployed as our TC1232 reset pull-up. Perfect. So to test this in operation, I decided to throw together the two reset circuits on a breadboard so I could observe their operation on my oscilloscope. So let's take a look at that. Firstly, here is the reset output of the original Smith trigger base circuit, triggered by the rising edge of the 5 volt power line, as it exceeds about 4.75 volts, which is the lower limit of our typical 5% tolerance 5 volt regulated power supply. With our current choice of capacitor and resistor values, combined with the threshold level of the Smith trigger input's high transition, which is about 1.6 volts, we can see that our power on reset state is held for about 50 milliseconds. Similarly, if we instead trigger the scope with the rising edge of the release of the manual reset button, with the trigger level at the threshold level of the Schmidt triggers inputs low transition, which is about 0.9 of a volt, we can also see a clean reset state release. The scope also clearly captures the capacitor voltage ramping up via the pull-up resistors to the Smith trigger's high transition threshold. Now let's look at the TC1232 reset output. Again, we'll first trigger the scope with the rising edge of the power line when power exceeds about 4.75 volts. With the TC1232, we can see the reset signal being held active for about 660 milliseconds. According to the data sheet, this is typically 610 milliseconds, but can be anywhere between a minimum of 250 milliseconds and a maximum of 1000 milliseconds. These delay times are all perfectly fine for our retro CPU needs. In fact, the 6809 only requires the reset signal to be low for a minimum of one clock cycle. But of course, reset can be asserted for as long as you like. You'll note that after a further 150 milliseconds or so, reset asserts again for a similar period. This is actually the expected watchdog timer triggered reset, as I haven't connected a clock to the strobe input pin on our simple breadboard test. So this also shows that the watchdog function is working as expected. Okay, once again, if we instead trigger the scope with the rising edge of the manual reset button, again triggered at 0.9 of a volt, we can also see a clean reset signal release. We can also see a nice clean and relatively sharp high transition of the internally pulled up debounced reset button input when we release the reset button. So this looks like the simple low cost retro friendly reset solution that I'm very happy to go with. Finally replacing the old school capacitor and resistors and TTL Smith trigger chip based approach. I hope you enjoyed this little diversion on the reset solution. Now I can get on with finalising my updated MECB combined 6809 or 6809E CPU card design. That's it. Thanks for watching.